Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Warrior Masterclass, part two of 20. It is iCargos, joined by the homie Takanashi. What's up, man? So we're back. We're back for some more. Uh, we're back to bug you again. We're going to do part two today. As you can see, part two is creating your warrior. So what does that mean? We're going to talk about choosing a faction. We're going to talk about choosing a race and all the different races and racials and just kind of sharing some uh, insight into that stuff. Um, and just kind of going over, you know, some of the broad strokes of stuff you want to consider before actually creating your character and jumping into the game. So, here we go. Creating your warrior. So there's kind of this three-step process you want to ask yourself. You want to first ask, what are your in-game goals? Do you primarily want a PvE? Do you primarily want a PvP? I would imagine for most of you it would be some combination of both. Uh, what is your commitment level? How much time do you actually have to play? And in addition to that, what is your mindset uh, going into the game? Do you know um, from the get-go that you're going to be more of a casual player and not going to go super serious about it? Or are you going to go on the opposite end of the spectrum and you just plan on no-lifing um, and really going super hardcore? And the third thing is what role interests you the most? Do you want a tank? Do you want a DPS? Do you want a both? Because as you guys know in vanilla, or even if you don't know, Oftentimes, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You have finite resources, you have finite time and energy, finite gold, and these are going to give you some limitations on your character and what you can and can't do. You're not going to be able to just respec every 30 seconds, or there's no dual spec or anything like that. So all this stuff is going to factor into your decision-making process and help you decide, you know, what faction, what race. So moving on to this slide now, we're going to go over the different, different alliance races, the different horde races, talk a little bit about their racials, and um, what do you think, Taka? Should we start it by saying what we think the, the bottom line, you know, best PvE, PvP, that type of thing, or do you want to do it after? After? Yeah, yep. We just go, yep. Okay. Um, so, for, on the Alliance side, for PvE, yeah, I put uh, Human. And then for PvP, it's going to be Gnome with an edge over Dwarf and Night Elf held equally. Again, it's just an edge, and we'll go into explaining it. And Dwarf and Night, Dwarf and Night Elf are above human. So in PvP, human would be uh, in the bottom slot there. On the Horde side, PvE tank would be uh, Torin, but we'll, we'll, we'll unpack that a little bit more. Uh, on the PvE DPS side, it's going to be Orc, and uh, PvP is going to be Orc. Um, so do you have any comments around that first, um, Taka, because they're, you know, there's, there's, a, it's a polarizing topic. People get really spicy yeah. about race when it comes to yeah. the warriors. I mean, people have a lot of uh, arguments regarding, uh, uh, especially like alliance. You have the dwarf racials are pretty strong against rogues and blah blah blah. But uh, I mean, a P PvP scenario, uh, are you talking about a duel? Do you want to win against the duel? I mean, rogues in a duel? Then sure, go with the dwarf, right? Because you can remove the bleeds and you can remove the poisons and yeah. So I mean, do you want to play in a pre-made? I mean, then why are you worrying about rogues? Because there's only going to be one rogue mm -hmm. in a pre-made, right? So there's no use for having that. And also with the argument of uh, humans, uh, that you have uh, what you call a perception yeah the stealth detection cooldown yep yeah so i mean uh it's uh working very poorly in vanilla and uh i would say uh it's too easy for the rogue to avoid uh to make it uh, sensible to spec in i mean choose human just for that right so i mean of course, it's uh, it's uh, you know your your ch the choice and whatever fits uh, you the most. Of course, but gnome is the perfect uh, you know warrior because you can uh, get out of those uh, uh, you know frost novas and you know roots and stuff like that. And it's just insane. And I mean night elf has a potential of being uh, invisible, right? Which is pretty huge as well for ambushing and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I, I'll say uh, you, you you have different uh, pros and cons on, on the Alliance, but definitely Gnome is the superior 
above everyone else, right? Right, right. And and, dep- and and like you said, depending on what your play style is, what your goals are, you know, there could be different options depending on what, you know, what you want to do. Um, yeah. And the thing you want to keep in mind too, uh, Taka said it really well before, is, is at the end of the day, guys, it is Vanilla WoW. You know, play it for the right reasons and play a character that you're going to fall in love with, that you're going to feel attached to, that you're going to enjoy playing, you're going to enjoy the animations, you're going to enjoy the look and feel, the way the armor sits on you. Um, Because at the end of the day, if you're playing something that looks fugly to you, you're probably just not, you're going to just, you're going to be a little bit less motivated to hop in there and and do what you got, do what you need to do. It's going to end, end with that you, you know, you can't stand to look at your tune. You're going to stop logging in and you're, you know, eventually going to re-roll to another class that looks what you, you know, sexy and whatever. Yeah. I personally, dwarves have grown on me a lot over the years, but I've, I've known quite a few dwarf priests that have just couldn't stand their characters. Um, but <laughs> yeah. anyway, we're going to talk about, we're going to go through each race now and just provide a little bit of commentary on each race. So starting with humans, as you can see, guys, there's some, um, some small variations in the primary stat distributions between across strength, agility, stamina, intellect, and spirit, but uh, not too huge of a deal there. So humans have stealth detect cooldown. They have plus 5% to spirit. They have plus five skill to swords and maces and 10% reputation guide. So Taka already talked about the stealth attack a little bit. It's a little bit underwhelming, easy to play around. Spirit, I'll jump in. Warriors do benefit a lot from spirit, uh, more so than any other class. But the main thing that, you know, that jumps out is this plot plus five skill to swords and maces. Why is this so impactful, at least in a PvE sense? And then maybe you can explain what you were talking about with the glancing blows in PvP, man. Yes, I mean, uh, the humans and the orcs have uh, this uh, increased weapon skill, and also you have uh, trolls uh, with the and dwarves with the ranged uh, weapon, you know, addition, right? But since we're not hunters, it doesn't really matter. But uh, the thing with the glancing blows is that when you're, uh, I mean, if you're in a PvP scenario, you don't have to worry about glancing blows because it doesn't affect the targets uh, the same level as you. It only affects levels, uh, you know, two two levels above you, and three and four and you know whatever. But the uh, the thing is that it reduces uh, the <clears throat> the damage on your uh, auto attacks by. Uh, Forty uh, percent, if it's a boss, which is you know three levels above you, and fifty-five percent if it's four levels above you, you know. So, the thing that weapon skill does is increase uh, the damage you do, so that you can potentially, I don't know, you know, level out the fact that your glancing blows are reducing the damage you do, you deal, right? So this is huge in uh, in PV because your auto attacks are, I mean, if you just count the number of attacks you do on a boss fight, it's uh, crazy. And to have 40% less damage on each uh, hit is, you know, you can do the numbers, right? It's, uh, it's pretty sick. So that reduced the amount of rage you gain and, you know, and the just list, the list goes on. So plus weapon skill, is uh, pretty mu- uh, huge in uh, vanilla, but the thing is that you have all these uh, gear that can also give you plus weapon skill. You have weapons that gives you uh, higher weapon skill. You have gloves, belt, you know, uh, etc. So you can pretty much be, a, you know, a night elf as well, and a dwarf, and uh, I don't know, gnome is. You don't, you don't want to be a no. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, so I mean, uh, I think the highest DPS I ever saw was from a dwarf warrior. And people can talk about whatever they want, but this guy uh, did the highest amount of damage ever done by a warrior. And I'm not talking about some, you know, bullshit private server that you have reduced uh, armor or... I don't know, whatever they got on certain private servers that makes uh, you deal a higher amount of damage. Um, you know, I'm talking about a server that everyone played on, right? Okay. So, yeah, so potentially 
you you have uh, you know you have to work around it a little bit but i would say again at the end of the day play whatever you love and what you like to look at i mean you'll uh, you'll uh, still manage well in pve right mm -hmm. pvp is a totally different thing because in pvp uh, the fact is that your racials can save you which will save your you know the guy behind you the healers and potentially your racials can impact as much that you know you're gonna win or lose this uh, big fight at blacksmith against another pre-main right so choosing uh, uh, race uh, in pvp is everything and in pve i think the only thing that matters is that you like what you're looking at hmm. nice it's a refreshing perspective all right um so moving on to night elf here uh i know this is what you have the most experience with this night elf you keep seeing pop up is actually a, a sort of a, an emulation of taka's actual character we tried to rebuild it in the mount model viewer yeah. um so he has a lot we of wanted to use uh, we wanted to use uh, thunder fury but it was too big it didn't fit the screen. <laughs> it didn't fit in the slides yeah um <laughs> so shadow meld is something that every with each day i'm learning more and more different useful things with as, with a hunter there's plenty of cool stuff you can do with shadow meld you can get a pet that can yeah. stealth you can stealth and you're just in the flag room defending and yeah. people aren't able to detect yeah. you as easily but you're saying as a warrior too there's a lot of useful applications for shadow meld as well right yeah i mean the, the element of surprise uh, the fact that uh, i mean if you're if you're fighting against a class that uh, you know you know whatever scenario but if you shadow meld it means that it's easier for you to get the first uh, charge off and stuff like that i mean a lot of classes can do some aoe whatever but uh, they have really short range on aoe abilities and should give you the you know upper hand and I mean, you can you you're can take a, a break. A real basic scenario too. You said, you said that, uh, like, even if you're out in the open world, you can yeah. like run behind yeah. a tree and drop okay. combat with shadow meld, right? Yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, like re sick. Re I, mean, I, I can't even tell you how many you know corpse uh, runs this uh, this racial has saved me. You can shadow meld. You can go take a take a leak. You can go get some food. You can catch a cup of coffee, and also if you have let's say a mage or hunter whatever it is i mean running after you uh if you have uh, you know you can run around the corner shadow meld and they will run after you and you'll be you know right there and bam right yeah you have a shot of just dropping and they'll just miss you yeah. and then it'll be over yeah. and let's yeah. not forget about the most absolutely hands down the most op uh racial when it comes to leveling as a warrior uh, of course, I'm talking about Wisp Spirit, dude. <laughs> it yeah. is absolutely broken as a warrior. Um, you know, you're going to be dying so many thousands of times that the uh, the Wisp Spirit giving you the increased movement speed and death will uh, actually end up saving you 20 days played. So that's yeah. uh, very useful. <laughs> and then uh, you got the Nature Resist in there too, which could uh, help a little bit as well. But I don't know, the resists seem like kind of a meme. Are they a meme, all these different resists on, that you get a little bonus to? Or, I mean, I mean uh, you're doing, uh, let's say, uh, uh, AQ, right? And you get that free 10 uh, Nature Resistance. But I mean, yeah, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Right? It's just probably to show that this class is undead, so he's you know resistant against uh, what is it, Fro uh, uh, frost, right, or whatever. And dwarves have tough skin, so they're resistant against frost, right? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not super impactful. But anyway, so no. dwarves have stone form. That's their primary one. They got plus five to guns. They have uh, frost resistance. But stone form actually is another kind of somewhat underrated racial. I'd say there's a lot you can do with stone form. It's good on a lot of different classes. Um, the dwarves can play um, right off the bat. Stone form can drop off like serpent sting. Um, the um, Viper Sting, it can drop off, you know, bleeds and poisons that rogues are applying on you. It can even drop off the uh, the Devouring Mortal Plague. Strike. Oh, Mortal Strike, huh? 
Yeah. Uh, Mortal Strike debuff gets removed. That's a big deal, too. And the Devouring Plague um, Priest Racial Ability is actually considered a disease, so it can drop that stuff as well. In addition to, what is it, I think it's 10% armor that you gain, and I know you love armor as well, but um, is there any other applications you can think of with stone form? It does seem like a very useful ability. I mean, it is, right? You, you have this kind of thing that, you know, PvE scenario can reduce, you know, uh, you know the breeze for for the healers if you have this sick debuff and I mean you shadow priests and war warlocks can be you know an easier target for you to, to duel or kill or whatever and yeah and PvP is really nice uh, against rogues and other warriors and stuff like that but like we said I'm not uh, when I choose a PvP class I don't go for what I can I don't know. I am I'm the kind of guy that don't really give a shit about duels because duels to me is the same thing. When I go to the gym and let's say we're doing sparring in, you know, uh, some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and we can fight 200 times in a sparring scenario and you're going to win. But who cares about training, you know? That's what a duel is. It's only practice. Mm -hmm. Only shit that matters to me is when you and I go head to head. This is serious. This is the real shit. This is what when it in a, matters. In a pre-made environment. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you can f you can beat me two hundred times in a duel. But the only thing I care about is can I beat you in a fighting, you know, real scenario, right? One thing I'll chime in too is that stone form does seem very good and in a sense it would kind of, um, you know, help your finesse in the game if you're able to potentially drop some of the stuff, get out of combat, disengage, reinitiate at your own pace. But I think one of the reasons why Gnome would have the edge over even Dwarf and Night Elf is that it gives you a direct bonus to your to your movement, like to your ability yeah. to, uh, to, yeah. to move and to get out of stuff, right? And that, that yeah. seems to be king, man. Just mobility Thanks. is everything in WoW. So being able to have that extra yeah. finesse when it comes to mobility, super, super yeah. good. And also a lot of the things that the dwarf is good at, you can remove uh, by using potions and stuff like that, right? Okay. And as a, as a gnome, you can get out of a trap and then you can pop a free action potion. Uh, so that, that gives you a huge advantage. You don't have to pre-pop it, right? This is crazy. So, yep. yeah. And moving on to, yeah, and so just to move right into Gnome. So Escape Artist breaks snares and roots. Um, so this is what we're talking about here. And it's on a pretty short cooldown, too, isn't it? Isn't it like a minute and a half yeah. or something like that? A minute. A minute, Is right? it a minute? Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty short cooldown. Again, giving you that extra finesse when it comes to movement is, is really fantastic. Uh, the Arcane Resist is a meme, and plus 5% intellect may help you with your weapon skill. So that's pretty useless. Um, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's for that reason mainly. Escape Art is just super, super good. So let's move on to Horde Races now. We got Orcs, Undead, Torns, and Trolls. Just as a quick aside, uh, every race in the game can be a warrior, right? So yeah, if you look yeah. at this little chart. That's, that's pretty huge. Yeah. Just, you know. Every race, it, as you it, can It's see. like Blizzard is telling you to play warrior, you know? And then they're telling you to play a uh, rogue, but... <laughs> rogue yeah. almost as much, yeah. They're they're yeah. Uh, almost but, every race, yeah. except for the cows. No rogue left <laughs> for the cows. Yeah. Um, so orcs, undead, torn, and trolls. Let's break it down. So orcs we have listed here as potentially best PVE DPS uh, and also best in slot when it comes to PVP. Now, with this whole shift we're talking about with uh, potentially even Fury Warrior tanking and stuff like that, it makes me think, you know, if the meta is shifting in a way that are orcs even potentially comparable to Torrens when it comes to PvE tanks, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. But the main thing that sticks out when it comes to orcs is the Blood Fury attack power cooldown. So it's an on-demand yeah. DPS increase, something that's kind of rare in vanilla to even have in the first place. That helps yeah. you throughout every stage of the game while leveling and PvP and PvE just super, super useful. Um, on demand, you know, damage, uh, damage increase, and then the 25% static chance to resist stuns. Um, this yeah. is very, very impactful because uh, people don't even understand how sick and broken this racial is. <laughs> yeah, because there's not really an internal cooldown on it. It could potentially yeah. happen a couple times throughout the course of a fight. Resisting a mm -hmm. five point kidney shot can just e very easily win you that fight, let alone give you a slight edge that maybe some of these other racials would give you. And the main reason 
maybe not the main, but one of the top reasons why it's so good is that WoW in PvP is so much about like chess, like bluffing cooldowns back and forth, exchanging cooldowns, trying to predict your opponent's you know ability usage and cooldown usage, and you can't really play around this. No matter how hard you try, what are you just going to not stun them and, and fear that they're going to resist it? No. Okay. So it can really just throw a spanner in the works and just fuck up your whole game plan. Um, and I think that that's one of the major reasons why it's good, as well as the plus five to act specialization for the reasons why we talked about with uh, before. That's um, you know, giving you some kind of bonus there, which is quite nice. Um, sorry to, to hog that airspace. Is there anything else you want to add about orcs? Um, there's, I'm sure you've seen uh, firsthand as an alliance warrior how broken the the, the I orcs mean, can be. Uh, it's like uh, when you're you're charging an orc and and they resist the, the one second stun, and then you're intercepting them right after, and they're resisting your three seconds stun. Right? I mean, yo. Yeah. It's, it's so broken, it's, uh, you know, it's not even funny, right? And this is happening all the time, right? I mean, like, it's, 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 it's not something that's very rare. Like, it's happening, you know, multiple times a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a crazy thing. Yep, so it works super, super good. Uh, moving on to Undead. <laughs> I know you had a funny little thing to say about Undeads. How do you feel about uh, Will of the Forsaken, Daga? What? I know you had a you had a funny uh, comment on uh, Will of the Forsaken as a, as a uh, racial for horror. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. Warriors. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, arguments regarding the the undead warrior. I mean, it's it's a huge thing, Will of the Forsaken, because you can get out of fear. Yeah, warrior needing Will of the Forsaken to get out of a fear. Yeah, please. I mean, if you need that shit to get out of a fair, you should just delete your warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Start from scratch. Start from level one. Yeah. Play a class that needs will, dude. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to be nearly as helpful to a warrior as it might be for some other class to get out of that fear. You have multiple ways to get out of a fear as a warrior. Um, so that's the first thing. But um, other than that, you got some cannibalize, which is actually a, a decent racial, you know, while leveling and stuff. Underwater breathing is quite nice. Um, and okay, moving on to Torin. So Torin has a war stomp, stun cooldown, on-demand stun with a little bit of a cast time to it. Has a static plus five percent bonus to their health points and a little herbalism and nature resist bonus as well. Um, now I've heard just for the longest time, just throwing around, Torin warriors best PVE tank. Torin warriors best PVE tank on the horde side. But it makes me wonder, you know, if if we're really in a in a world where um, you know, DPS. I mean, no, just as much TPS as possible is going to be optimal. You know, is is it really? But at the same time, using the, the the one of the drawbacks of the Blood Fury attack power cooldown is a reduction to healing. So you're probably not going to be using that uh, within the course of a raid encounter. So, are you are you aligned? Do you think Torn is uh, the best uh, for PVE tank? I mean, uh, you have the increased health pool, right? Uh, so in uh, terms of uh, I mean, health is a really huge uh, value for your money thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, people are talking about the uh, troll because of the haste. I don't know if they're going to, you know, theory craft more on that, but it's going to be interesting to watch. But yeah, I, I mean, Torin uh, Warrior, the, the health is really nice. But uh, orc tanking with the uh, axe is insane, you know. Mm. That th there's so many axes in the game that are just sick, you know. You have early axe from Onyxia, which is you know pretty huge for for uh, uh, orcs, and then you have the axe from Nefarian. You have uh, quest uh, turn-ins from AQ40. Uh, you can just uh, complete two of them, you know. So you get two sick axes from uh, AQ40, and uh, I mean, then you're 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 just set, right? So yeah. So so is, it might be a fair assessment to make then that I mean, if you are in some sort of hardcore progression guild and you're wiping nonstop, um, you know, and you need all the survivability you can get, Torin might have the edge with survivability. But if you're in a world where you know, dying isn't the issue. It's mainly the the threat you're generating. Then something yeah. like an orc or a troll, 
um, yeah. you know, yeah. might might be know. superior because they're putting out more TPS. So trolls, he's talking about trolls. It's kind of a funny thing. I hadn't heard about this till recently, but the meta yeah. of tanking is shifting in a way where people are considering trolls to be BIS because of their berserking cooldown. Now, if you're at full health, it's only giving you a 10% haste bonus. It goes all the way up to 30%, depending on how low yeah. you are. So a 10% yeah. haste bonus, how valuable is that? You also get the bonus HP regen. Um, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, I mean, people are talking about a lot of things, and uh, I think that it's just going to be very interesting to see what they can break down, come classic, what's going to work uh, on paper, but not not so much in reality. You know what I mean? Because that's actually two completely different things. And uh, I, I just enjoy to, you know, play something that I, you know, that I like to watch. And I would, uh, I mean, trolls are kind of funny. They look kind of cool. But the thing I don't like about trolls is that, you know, you have these big fucking feet, you know. And so, I mean, whatever, whatever. No armor. shoes class? You don't play classes that they, they don't yeah. have shoes on? Yeah, I mean, in my mind, if you're a warrior and you're the front runner, you come to the, you know, to the front line, the first thing the enemy is going to do is step on your toes. You right? stub your toe on a gnome, dude. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah. I like the orcs. Uh, I really like the orcs. Yeah. Torn is pretty cool. Undead so really nice. The, the, the sad thing about the undead is that uh, you know, you can't even compare to an orc. If you're playing a PvP thing and you like that, no matter how cool the undead looks, you know, that storm resist is just broken. And you can actually spec as a warrior into... And this is what a lot of orc warriors does, right? They spec into the improved storm resist, so you have another 15% increased storm resist, which is... You're closing in on, you know... You know, resisting 50% of your stunts, which mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, it's just broken. Yeah. Yeah, that seems insane. So, I mean, you pretty much have lines of reasoning for any of these races now, guys. So, it's kind of the balls in your court. The tried and yeah. true that you've heard for many years is that Torn's the best PvE tank, but uh, yeah. there's some other considerations here with orcs and trolls. Um, so, I think that's going to be it. We touched on all the races. We touched, oh, we got to talk about faction. Let's talk about faction really quick, Daka. So, Alliance versus Horde. Um, what are your like general thoughts about the two? Yeah, the first thing that that's a fact is that uh, as an alliance, you have uh, you have the the pros of being you know you you have the opportunity or the choice of being a casual player and still perform okay or you know pretty well right and as a horde guild or warrior uh, it kind of requires a little more effort it requires more from whatever you're doing uh, because of you know paladins right mm. so you have an easier time as an alliance definitely there's nobody in the world that can argue uh, you know about that uh, and uh, I played alliance almost you know every second of uh, uh classic or vanilla wow and this time i'm going horde because i don't know it's it's even more of a challenge and that appeals to me so i guess that's the first thing that you know, so you the general to... the general real difference here is that Alliance have Paladins, Horde have Shamans. There's going to be a different kit associated with both those classes. With Paladins, you're going to have mo more oh shit buttons. Uh, yeah. Stuff like Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Freedom, Sac Blessing of Sacrifice, Sanctuary. I mean, those aren't really oh shit buttons, but um, these are some yeah. of the tools you have on that side, and they could potentially lend themselves to an easier playstyle, an easier time. Um, yeah. Not not You don't have to work as hard, potentially. And then uh, Horde have access to stuff like Wind Fury, some of the shop shaman abilities um but but yeah that's 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 an interesting thought so anything else on faction or i think i think that about sums it up yeah so i mean uh when it comes to that you know the fact is that you have uh you have potentially you know 
you can do more damage as a warrior on horde side as well. But it will, I mean, it will require more from your raid than if you play alliance. But you have to realize that you can, you know, you can do some crazy shit as a warrior because of wind fury. And uh, I mean, everyone who played, uh, you know, with wind fury knows that you know, seeing those things and as a two-handed warrior. Uh, using Hand of Justice, you see the Hand of Justice proc with the Wind Fury. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Ya. Yeah. See you, kid. Yeah, see ya. All right. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. Um, this is part two, wrapping up, and uh, we'll see you in part three. Have a good one.